A cafe doesn't run itself. You need a barista, the one who knows the recipes and handles the brewing and serves the drinks. In MCP, that barista is the server. Hi, I'm Ian. I'm a cloud advocate here at Microsoft, and I've always loved seeing how abstract concepts like protocols suddenly click once you connect them to something real. And servers are where it all begins. Today, I'm joined by Bruno and Sandra, both of whom share over 30 years of experience as developers. Today, Bruno and Sandra are going to be our expert barista team, showing us what it means to build an MCP server that does the brewing behind the scenes. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Ian. So um, yeah, hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us. Today, we're going to um, talk about MCP servers. Um, and we're going to show you a project that we actually built a couple months ago for another event. So if you're on this video, it's going to be short. If you want more details, you can go in, into the repo and learn more and watch the recording from the previous um, event. So here we have um, how you can build an MCP server using uh, Quarkits. And uh, we're going to perform this task um, straight away and see how, how if everything still works since the time that we built this thing the first time. Sandra, as we create Quarkus project here, what is uh, uh, what is the one thing that you like about MCP servers and and how are you using it today on on your development? So I like to put them in front of my APIs. So like if an API changed, like in previous life, we need to keep in mind, you know how the APR call is performed, and if something changes, it was kind of easy to break your code afterwards. And now when I have an M uh, MCP server for this, it will make it just more efficient and even handles if my API API call specifications will change. So that's one of the things I really like doing here. Awesome. And so Bruno, are you preparing to create the whole MCP server? Is is that a, a instruction for GitHub Copilot? So yes, this is exactly what I'm doing. So instead of uh, us going and creating the MCP server manually, we're going to actually set a context here so that the LLM can create for us. So we have this prompt here, which is a Quarkus MCP server instructions file. We're going to use the GitHub Copilot instructions feature in Visual Studio Code. Uh, we could going to put this in, this file inside the instructions folder, and um, we're going to make sure that this uh, also applies to everyone. Applies to. And uh, once we have that, we're going to use this prompt here. I hope this works. St I hope it still works. <laughs> yeah, welcome, folks, to 2025. That's how you can develop your apps nowadays. So it, it did use, uh, as we can see here, it did read the Quarkus MCP server instructions.md file. Um, this file here has lots of instructions. Number one, we're going to use Java 21. We're going to create an MCP server using the server sent events. We're going to use CDI for dependency injection. We're going to have the MCP endpoint on this URL here. Uh, and this is the structure that we have. We're going to use some MCP tools if available. Uh, this is the architecture you're going to have and some common issues to avoid. Now, the prompt that we gave was this one, implement an MCP server with these capabilities. We're going to have the least monkey species capability, get monkey details, get random monkey species, and get statistics. Uh, and then a monkey species has the following data. Uh, species name, location, details, population, latitude, longitude, and how many times this species has been accessed on that MCP server, including include a data or set of monkey species in the code and add a few fictional species with different attributes. So you're going to have some examples of species that the LLM has in its training model that are actually uh, real, and it's going to create a few, a few fake ones. Last time we ran this thing, we had a quantum monkey species of radioactive radioactive uh capabilities i don't i don't know but it was quantum something it was quite funny so what are we still using the same models like last time i see you have your cloud sonnet something so last time we did use sonnet 3.7 now we are using sonnet oh, okay. 4. Interesting. That was, that's the main difference between the last time we did this thing 
So it, it is going forward and creating everything. So it created a species document, a species file. Let's take a look at that. So here it created our record and with incremented axes for statistics. As we know, records are uh, immutable. Um, so that's why there is this method here to increment the axis count. Not the best way to implement such thing, but it's how the LLM figured out. Um, it's also implementing a test and now the readme file for the server. I really love records. It's making the whole discussion about Lombok so obsolete. Yeah, true. If, if folks still want to use it, go for it. But I think I think if we want to keep progressing and moving forward with Java development, there's lots of features in the Java language now that you don't really need uh, um, APIs or libraries like Lombok to do that. But for certain things, Lombok is still quite helpful. Well, added... if you are not using 16 or above, if I remember correctly, yeah. so with 17, it was there for sure, and 21 as well, obviously. But yeah, I think with Absolutely. older versions, it might not be possible. Absolutely. So, OK, so it created a bunch of files for us. Let's open a terminal and see if everything works. Uh-oh, wrong terminal. This one. <laughs> CD monkey. And MVW compile. Oh, actually, let's run from here. Uh, yeah, there is a terminal in the in VS Code GitHub, as well, right? Yeah, GitHub Copilot is. Oh, you could also ask Copilot to do it for you. Yeah. So let's. You know, see. I always wanted to be a manager, and now with Copilot, I can always just tell you what to do, and it does it so <laughs> perfectly. And then if you have the next to allow, you can even use the arrow, and then it does it without you even confirming. Which is risky, but also somewhat yeah. cool. And you please make sure you only allow it for like things that are safe to use, such as compile and test. Okay, cool. So it did compile, it did run the test. Now let's use this MCP inspector project here that is on, on NPM. We're gonna, gonna copy and run. Oh, what happened? Could not be found. I guess it's the starting the project. No, no. The uh, oh, because I pasted twice. There you go. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's allow. Uh, sure. So it's building. So it's it's trying to figure out if the project is up and running. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just skip this thing. And no, let's pause. Let's keep. We don't want it to test. This is an interesting structure. Don't try to test after building things. Let me do the test manually. So Maven, compile, package, Oracle's dev. Yeah, we are on recording. We want to show it live here. So uh, we're going to do SSE, and let's say if it's up and running. What was the port? 8080, yeah. OK, because it says 3001 here. Oh, it's oh, it's already up and running. That's That's why. It was already up and running somewhere else. Hmm. So, Let's change the port. Yeah, good eyes. Thank you for that, Sandra. Yeah, that's what pair programming is for. <laughs> so now we have, oh, we have a new readme. We have a bunch of files that we don't need to look into right now. And what is the URL? MCP slash SSE. This is the URL. Connect. Mm -hmm. And voila, we are connected and we can list the tools. Now we can get a random, oh, list monkey species, run tool. There you go. So we got uh, a bunch of species here. Uh, let's see if there's a proboscis monkey, uh, Mandrill aurora tail monkey. This is a fictional one. Look at that, fictional northern mistlands. <laughs> so 
this is an example of creating an MCP server using Quarkus, but using the LLN. You give instructions, you give a copilot, GitHub copilot instructions file on how to create an MCP server. And then you tell, hey, create me an MCP server with this scenario, this use case. And it generates everything for you. All you have to do is Quarkus dev and voila, you have your project up and running. Now, once we have the MCP server up and running, now it comes to how do I configure this MCP server in clients so I can use this MCP server um, within my, my development tool or within my chat GPT window and so on, so, or a cloud desktop, uh, or even other, other AI agents um, um, tools that you have in your, in your environment. But we are done with the MCP server, so we can... Uh, you can join us on the next talk for MCP clients, where we're going to learn how to configure this MCP server to be accessed. So thanks for having us. Thank you so much, Bruno and Sandra, for this amazing session. The only thing better than one cloud advocate is two, and we had both of you today to lead us on this amazing journey. For those of you who followed along or would like to learn more, you can find resources at aka.ms forward slash Java and AI for beginners. Link is also in the description of this video. We hope you stick around and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.